At the Paris Air Show in 1989, Boeing announced something quite interesting. They had enjoyed amazing success with its 747, the four engine, fantastic liner, you know, the queen of the skies as it was called. And it had been their bread and butter for long haul passenger aircraft for many, many years. But Boeing expressed a desire to build a more capable two engine airplane. They had had great success with the 767 and they were looking at a new one called the 767X that would become the 777. The decision was based on the very capable turbofan engines available in the late 1980s from three engine makers, from uh, Rolls-Royce, from Pratt & Whitney, and of course from GE. But GE made a very, very big decision. Our leader, Brian Rowe, came to the conclusion that the 777 concept was only gonna get bigger and demand more thrust and more capability. You know, we have a saying in this industry, one thing you can count on with a new airplane, it's gonna get bigger and demand more thrust. And so Brian took that initiative to create, again, one of the most dramatic engines ever called the GE90. The only engine comparable to it in terms of just the breakthroughs for commercial aviation is the TF-39 from the mid-1960s. So in 1990, Brian Rowe announced the GE90 engine, the world's most powerful engine, the world's largest engine, with a diameter, a fan diameter that equals the fuselage of a 727. Just extraordinary. And, and perhaps the real show, showstopper for many people was the fact that it introduced carbon fiber composite blades, a technology that Rolls-Royce had tried in the 1970s with great difficulty that contributed to their bankruptcy. And then in the 1980s, we had developed an engine called the unducted fan engine, an engine with counter-rotating fan blades actually in the back. They were made of carbon fiber composites. So we got the experience to do a GE90 blade from our experience with the unducted fan engine because in the back were these counter-rotating composite blades. So while the UDF engine never found a permanent commercial application, the technology of this composite technology was extremely important to introduce in the GE90. So we have this very large GE90 with composite blades that has all this thrust capability well beyond 100,000 pounds of thrust. But we had a tremendous challenge from the early 1990s all the way to 1999. It was a decade of difficulty because we were introducing very unique technologies. The engine was very expensive, it was heavy, because the aircraft hadn't grown to the size we had envisioned yet. And we became very quickly the third place competitor in this race because you had three engine manufacturers vying for 777 business. It was a very tremendous financial strain on the company. And as a result, by the time we got to 1998, we had a growth program for the, for the engine called the uh, GE90 dash 102 engine. It was going to produce 102,000 pounds of thrust and the program was canceled. And so the future of the GE90 looked pretty bleak in 1998. It was a tremendous drain on the company and there were many that thought we'd never see another GE90 again. But all that would change the next year. Our new leader, Jim McNerney, became president of the company the year before. He was very determined and his team to see a return of the GE90 as Boeing looked at larger 777s. And there was a concept they called the 777-300ER and also another plane called the 200LR. These are larger 777s and this played right into the thrust capability of the GE90. And we proposed an engine called the GE90-115B, an engine capable of 115,000 pounds of thrust to compete for this new family of Boeing 777s. And we pursued it as a sole source agreement. Now remember, we're a company that's third place on the 777 aircraft program, and now we're vying for a sole source on a new family of airplanes. And we win that competition in July of 1999. The GE90 115 engine is launched, and it stuns the world. Boeing, in fact, tells many customers it's a niche market. We selected it as a sole source because we think we'll probably produce 400 to 500 airplanes. And then GE had the, ch the challenge of going out to airlines that already had Rolls-Royce and Pratt-powered 777s and said, now we would like you to buy an airplane with ours. 
So even though we had launched the program, there was a lot of work ahead in 1999 and year 2000. And sure enough, that airplane became extremely successful. In fact, it has doubled the forecast for sales over the next several years. The 777-300ER is one of the most successful, profitable airplanes ever. One of the great twins. And the GE90 program became wildly successful in its performance has been just brilliant. The GE9115 may be one of the most profitable engines out there in service ever. And it helped us spawn a baby brother called the GENX. When Boeing announced its desire to build the Dreamliner, which is now called the 787 Dreamliner, we took a variant of the GE90 architecture to design the GENX engine. And that engine introduces another whole array of new technologies, has the carbon fiber fan blades, just like the GE90, but also introduces a carbon fiber case around the engine. Because of this non-metallic technology we introduce in the engine, we can take almost a thousand pounds of weight out of a 787 with our GENX engines. So we compete for that program in 2004, and we're down selected to compete head-to-head -head against Rolls-Royce with their Trent engine for all future 787s. And that program sells well beyond its expectations in addition. Within 15 years, we've already had orders now for more than 2,000 GENX engines to complement the success of the GE90. And again, you gotta ask yourself, where would GE be today without the GE9115B architecture, which inspires the GENX, which inspires the GP7200 aircraft engine that we've produced with Pratt & Whitney, for the Airbus A380. The GE9115 architecture very much informs the technology in the LEAP engine, as well as the Passport, a commercial jet engine. And yet think about 1998, there was a high probability the GE90 program was not gonna survive. But it's just another example of the tenacity of this business. I hope that comes through. This whole business is full of guys and, men and women who just like fight like crazy for these programs and technologies they believe in. That's certainly the case with the GE90. And the GE90 will spawn a whole generation of new engines that will influence aviation for the next 20 to 30 to 40 years. All because we refuse to give up on technologies we believe in.